Good morning, guys. Benvenuto alla mia cucina italiana. Thank you guys so much for joining in to my live ravioli immersion class. I'm Chelsea Davis and benvenuto alla mia cucina italiana. Get this camera set up so you guys can see what's going on in my world here. Um, this is gonna be super fun. If you shopped for your ingredients and you are doing this with me, right along at pace take you know take a pause if you need to or anything like that sorry if i go a little bit too fast um but this is going to be a lot of fun guys we're going to make some homemade pasta we're going to make a butternut squash filling and i'm going to show you guys the technique that i learned in italy on how to roll out the pasta this is like my old school hand crank ravioli or pasta um roller here so um, I'm really, really excited to do this with you guys. If you're doing this live, awesome, good morning. If you are doing this after the fact, save this video to your favorites tab and do this anytime. And I hope you'll you know, be doing this with your kids or with someone you love because making ravioli and making pasta is just a really special thing. And it's a way to bring people together in the kitchen and it's just, Spread a lot of love. So, okay, I'm gonna take off jewelry, take off rings on my fingers. I'm gonna wash my hands and we're gonna get started with making some pasta. So I hope you guys are doing well. This recipe is definitely awesome for the fall, for winter time. Um, I love to have it right around Thanksgiving. That butternut squash is just so, so seasonal. My friends laugh at me so hard because I will buy a bunch of big butternut squashes and keep them on my porch for decorations with pumpkins and corn stalks and mums. And then when I'm ready to do like a big butternut squash, just roast, um, I like to do it all at the same time. Um, I peel it, you know, I cut it, cube it, and then I roast it in the oven. And um, from there I puree it. So. Hoping that you guys, um, for your butternut squash, were able to do that. And if you didn't, guess what? You buy it already peeled, already cubed, and then you just roast it in the oven with some extra virgin olive oil and some sea salt and you're good to go. But I love butternut squash in the fall, so I do this kind of big batch thing um, so that I have a ton of it. Freeze it, use it in pastas, in pasta sauces. Um, gosh, I just love it so much. So, okay, I got my KitchenAid mixer. I have my all-purpose flour or zero-zero flour. Um, that is a really good Italian uh, flour for pizza making and for pasta making. And then I actually have some semolina flour right there. I have it in a big bowl because I'm one of those people, I use it so much when I make pasta that I buy the big bags um, from my good friend who owns a restaurant. He buys me the big 50 pounders. Um, and then I just kind of use it as I go, pour it in a bowl, and uh, use it, so. Mm. Cheers, guys. So, it's 10 a.m. in the morning as I'm filming this live for you all. So, I'm not drinking wine this morning. I'm sipping on my coffee, but you don't know what's in that coffee, okay? But cheers to you guys. I hope while you roll this out for lunchtime, dinner time, that you are enjoying a glass of wine because that's how Italians cook, guys. It is so nice to just have a little cocktail Cheers to your friends, cheers to your loved ones. Mm. Love that. Okay, so you don't have to have a KitchenAid mixer by any means, but it sure does make your life a hell of a lot easier um, when you're doing big batch stuff. So um, you could always do this in a bowl and then mix it with a spoon and then get your hands in there, throw it on your, uh, your countertop and start mixing this pasta together. But the KitchenAid just takes out a lot of that work for you. So make sure that if you're using the KitchenAid, you're using your dough attachment, okay? So we gotta separate wet ingredients from dry ingredients. Let's start with our dry ingredients. So it's gonna be the two types of flour that I mentioned and salt, that's it. Use good quality salt. I like kosher salt, I like sea salt. Um, and then we'll go into the wet ingredients after that. But if you guys don't have one of these, this is, should I move this out of the way? This is a, a digital scale, super nice, um, especially when like I use recipes from my cookbook from Italian culinary school, and it's European uh, measurements, so everything's in grams, way better than cups and things like that. Um, I do think that they list out how many cups that you need, but I'll tell you what, guys, try to get comfortable
uncomfortable with like eyeballing things because that's how Italians cook. We just throw a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of love, mwah, all in the bowl, and it's there. You gotta eyeball things, get a feel for it. That's what this technique is all about, right? Okay, so I'm gonna throw this bowl on here. I always go big batch whenever I'm doing pasta, okay? It's not worth it to do all this work and to just do like a tiny little thing. No, don't do that. This recipe in my um, culinary school cookbook, we triple it, okay? So that's like the basic recipe listed in the notes below, okay? So you guys that are following along live, it's not listed, I'll tell you as we go the measurements, but if you're doing this after the fact, okay? And you wanna do this any other time, make pasta, it's right there for you. So we're gonna do um, 450 grams of all-purpose flour and then 450 grams of semolina flour. So it's a half and half ratio, okay? So make sure you got your scale zeroed out there. I'll start with the semolina. This is like sandy flour here. It's like a beach in this kitchen when this is all done, okay? Okay, and you know, it's not perfect. About 450, I have it at 463. We will live, okay? You have to get good at assessing that texture, getting that feel down, okay? Next we got the all-purpose flour. 450 of that. Boom, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is grab my kosher salt. All right, the recipe calls technically, oh, it does exactly what I want it to, a pinch, okay? So we're gonna do a couple pinches here because like I said, this is big batch. So um, we're not doing anything less than a big batch of pasta. Cause like I said, it's just not, it's not even worth it guys. All right, so you can mix this up all together. So it's insieme in Italian, that means together. All right, or you could throw this onto your KitchenAid. That's what it's there for, okay? But we're gonna get messy, okay? Your kitchen's gonna be trash. Like I said, it's gonna be a beach up in here. So get comfortable with it. Do not make pasta on the day the cleaning lady comes or the day that you just spot cleaned your, your house and scrubbed your floors. Beth, my cleaning lady, she loves me after we make pasta. Um, definitely trashes your floors, but it's so fun. Make a mess and embrace it, okay? All right, so gonna start mixing that. We are gonna go with our wet ingredients. That's gonna be the uh, eggs, it's gonna be extra virgin olive oil, e basta, okay? So here's the olio, all right? We're gonna crack a dozen eggs into a separate bowl, okay? So let me grab that. You guys gotta laugh here because I don't have bowls like less than this giant size right here. Because everything I do is big batch. When you got a big family and you're cooking for friends and dropping pasta off to your friends, you do big batch, okay? So for this recipe, we're gonna do a dozen eggs. So get crack a lacking, baby. I wish my daughter Camilla was here to take some of the brunt of this work because she loves to crack eggs and she's actually better at it than I am. She does not get shells in the bowl, I kid you not. Okay. These are little minion chefs in training people. Start early with your kids. It's so much fun to cook together. Like I said, just bring in that love, that carefree timelessness in la cucina italiana. You don't even have to be Italian, okay? Just fake it, all right? Fake it till you make it. So we're doing a dozen eggs here, and what we're gonna do is it says technically to do up, up, up. 10 millimeters of extra virgin olive oil, two teaspoons. I'm tripling that, mind you, sorry for the confusion. Look at my notes below, okay? You know what I do is I do a little bit of this. Ba da da, ba da da, e ba da da, e basta, okay? Brava. All right, I'm gonna mix the wet ingredients here. Again, so it's in CMA together. And then what we're gonna do, your KitchenAid is making a well with the dry ingredients. So a well, what that basically means is 
you know, you're kind of making like a little hole in the middle of that flour. And we're gonna dump the eggs in there. And then it's gonna mix it for us. Like I said before, taking out the brunt of that mixing work, but you still are gonna get your hands dirty, so get excited for that. All right, I'll turn this off. It's all together there. Pour it. All right, these are fun jobs for kids to do. My kids love using the KitchenAid mixer and touching the knobs and helping mama. It's a lot of fun. All right. Not gonna forget about this stuff. This is gold. All right, so none to waste here. Get that going. Okie dokie. So in an ideal world, we want to refrigerate our pasta for about 30, at least 30 minutes before you start to roll it out. You want it to be chilled. We're gonna kind of expedite this process a little bit. We are gonna make our butternut squash filling here. So that'll give us a little bit of refrigeration time. But um, if you're doing this after the fact, you can pause the video, um, do this part first, take a little break, um, or you know you could do this even the night before and let it rest overnight in the refrigerator. That's always a good idea as well. Because it breaks up the work a little bit, okay? I'm cleaning up as I go. Molto importante. All right, so let's get that speed crack a in a little bit here. I'm gonna save this semolina flour. Um, I'm actually going to put some in a cup here and I'm gonna mix it with the all-purpose flour because we are gonna need that when we roll out the dough here. Awesome. This is so much fun, guys. It's a lot of work. Um, it's not something that I do like every day or even every week. That's why I'm all about doing this in like big batches, like every season or so depending on what's in season. So fall, winter time, it's gonna be that butternut squash. Um, in the spring, you're gonna be making, you know, ricotta with Swiss chard or spinach and or peas or something like that. That's what you're gonna stuff your ravioli with. So keep it seasonal, guys. It's a lot more fun to do it that way. All right, so this is coming together very nicely. Okay, so. Other equipment that you're gonna need, it's listed below, but if you don't have one of these, a bench scraper, I so, so, so recommend it. Maybe I can link below to that. Um, a bench scraper is so nice when we're rolling out the pasta, when we're mixing the pasta with our hands. It just, it's, it scrapes your board and keeps everything nice and tidy, okay? This is coming together nicely here. What I'm gonna do while this is mixing, okay, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone here. We'll not kill two birds with one stone. We're gonna kind of be efficient with our time. We're gonna start getting the filling together for the butternut squash. So, I didn't cut my shallot yet. I told you this is an immersion class. So for the filling, we're gonna need one to two shallots. So we're gonna start cutting away at that. Shallots are so good, they're so sweet. It's like the cross between garlic, it's like a garlic, and an onion had a sweet little baby, okay? And it just adds that delicate flavor to the filling here. Okay, so you peel it just like an onion. They're very strong when they're raw, so I don't recommend eating them raw, but what we are gonna do is we're gonna caramelize this in a little pan with some extra virgin olive oil. Oh baby, that's coming together real nice. So. Let me come back to this, okay? We'll come back to the shallot. We're only chopping it. Don't get scared now, okay? Um, we're gonna add some flour to this because this is very wet. Um, doesn't matter which flour you throw in, it's not a big deal. This is the all-purpose on the top. But pasta is very weather-dependent, okay? Um, it's very humidity-dependent. You, I mean, making pasta on like a wet, rainy day, it, it can really affect things, okay? Um, so you want to pay attention to that. You're going for a look. You want that pasta to scrape off the sides of the bowl. Um, you want it to come together, not be too sticky, not too bleh, okay? You want it to be a nice big ball. You'll see, okay? So I'm adding some more flour, just kind of eyeballing it as I go here. I'm gonna turn this down just a teens, but it is really coming together nicely. And you're gonna see why 
You want to take your rings off, all that stuff, because it's going to get all over your hands. It's going to get really nice and sticky. All right, let that go. It won't hurt just to kind of let that roll out. You don't want to roll it out for like an hour, okay? But a little extra caressing to that pasta with the KitchenAid will not hurt. So we're going to chop up this shallot. Oh my God, guys, I have to be careful. I just remembered. Um, I'm filming this right before Thanksgiving. So I just went and got my knives sharpened before like Thanksgiving week because this whole week is like my Super Bowl people, okay? If you love to cook, you're a chef, um, at home cook, this is the shit that we live for right here. So. If I can recommend to go get your knives sharpened, oh my gosh, what a game changer. You don't even realize like how blunt your knives get over time. That's something that you should definitely do like, I don't know, probably every year is what like a technical person would say to you. But I have like a little handheld knife sharpener. I do that before I cook most times. But I'm gonna be careful with this because this baby is sharp AF. My mom took our knives to get sharpened and she sliced her finger. So we're gonna be careful. All right, almost done with this here shallot. Ooh, it just makes me just love you guys so much, I'm serious. Just like an onion, these things just make you emotional and they make you cry. Okay. Oh God, I'm just so grateful for you all, thank you. So, ooh, that's went up the nostrils, love it. Oh, love. If you have a pair of ski goggles lying around, always nice for cutting onions, cutting shallots. Thank you, Annie Brisky, for showing me that. Great tip. They do make onion cutting goggles, but ski goggles work just as well, guys, okay? So, this is Molto Betty. This is looking really, really good. So I'm gonna turn that off, set it aside. I'm gonna start cooking down that shallot to caramelize. I do not want that temperature up high, okay? We're gonna keep it nice and low. So in your pan, a little bit of a drizzle of some extra virgin olive oil, nice small pan there. One, two, three, and basta. Don't measure, guys, okay? So we got one, or that's like one big shallot, kind of two uh, medium-sized ones, if you will. And we are going to cook that down. Okay, now let's get this cleaned up. We're gonna roll out the pasta here. Okay. So we're gonna take this off of the dough attachment here. Awesome. Oh, look how beautiful that is, guys. Love that. Okay, I'm gonna get my scraper ready to go. Nice. Thanks for scraping out the bowl as well. Get everything out of there. All the pudding now. Make sure you have a nice clean countertop. I wiped these babies down before I started. Do not clean your floors like I said, but wipe down your countertop because this is going all over that. Okay. Number waste here. Okay, and basta, that'll be good. Let that baby soak. Okay, so use that scraper. Get it off of the dough hook here. If you're not using the KitchenAid, that's okay. You take it out of the bowl and you just join in on this step right here. You might have a little extra rolling to do than I do, like I said, because that KitchenAid did a lot of the work for me. I got that KitchenAid in college. That was, I think, my college graduation gift from my mom. Um, which is so funny. I mean, who gets a KitchenAid for their college graduation gift? I don't know, maybe some of you guys are like into that, but that is me. I am a kitchen gadget dork, okay? I love fun kitchen gadgets. Okay, so here we are with our big batch of pasta. We got the flour on there. Some of it didn't get all combined into the pasta, that's okay. Um, there was like a little bit of egg sitting there that I spilled. That's okay. Get it all up in there. And let's start rolling, baby. I'm gonna separate a little bit of that flour because I just don't know if we're gonna need all of that. Okay, so 
This is where you get your exercise in, baby. Ejercicio. You're gonna push, pull, and then turn it a little bit. Push, pull, and turn. It's a feel. It's, it's like a motion, guys. Rock the boat, rock the boat. Right? Gotta rock that boat, baby. Get it all up in there. Okay? Have some saran wrap nearby because we are gonna wrap this so it doesn't dry out. Okay, and like I said, we're gonna put it in the fridge so that it can rest a little bit because we are working it, working it. We're getting a release of gluten here. So let me share with you guys my two cents about gluten and like gluten-free diets and stuff like that, okay? Years ago, when like the gluten-free diet was everything, okay, I'm talking 2000, 12, 2013, everybody was trying to go gluten-free, okay, for like health benefits. Don't do it, okay? That is so 2012, guys. You need gluten for your pasta, okay? Now, somebody who can make gluten-free pasta, I congratulate you. I can't, okay, because it just doesn't come together right, okay? It's, it falls apart when you do rice and stuff like that. Buy it from the store, okay, if you really truly have celiac disease, I'm talking if you truly have it and, you know, that's a true condition and um, um, a true, I guess, disease, if you will. Oh my God, I'm going on such a tangent. But if you don't have celiacs, eat the freaking gluten, okay? It's not going to kill you. It's good for you, okay? It's going to fill you up. It's very satiating. You need it to keep your pasta together. Just watch your portions, guys, all right? We don't need like a huge five-serving plate of pasta that you get like at an American Italian restaurant. Okay, if you did legs that day, maybe. But um, what I'm trying to say here is just watch your portions. And especially when you eat something that's like super homemade like this, it's so gosh darn satisfying that you don't need a lot, okay? You don't need like 50 ravioli. You're gonna feel really good after eating like six ravioli, okay? Some of you guys even less, okay? So we got this pretty good and a nice ball. My pasta is a little bit on the drier side, but keeping it nice and wrapped, it's gonna add a little bit of moisture in the fridge. I think I got a little crazy with that flour, so that's okay. All right, so there's my pasta baby. Spank that, that's wrapped. Okay, get my plastic wrap out. You could always put in a large Ziploc baggie too. this rest in the fridge. Do you see my heart rate is up? Holy cow. Seriously, guys, that is such a workout. Such a workout, and I love it. Okay. So here we go. So I can't see that far away. I'm just going to check and see if anybody is actually tuning in live here. Okay. Throw this in the fridge. All right. It's going to be better if you put it right on like a shelf in your fridge. That's gonna be colder than just like sitting on top of something. You want a nice flat shelf, okay? All right, let's see what's going on. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Mwah. Okay, we're gonna make our filling now, butternut squash filling. So we can scrape the countertop a little bit. It's okay if it's floury because it's gonna be, okay? There's the hubs over here. He's standing off on camera left so that you guys cannot see him. He's hiding, but he's eyeing up what I'm making for later. So boom, there is the butternut squash. Like I said, I have it whole, peeled it very carefully, cubed it, roasted it in the oven in some extra virgin olive oil, um, added a little bit of sea salt slash kosher salt, and there it is, so lovely for you. Isn't she lovely? Now what happens a lot of times is, you're gonna get that like water from the squash. So I did it last night or maybe two nights ago I did this. So it's gonna collect a little bit of water. So dump that water out so it's not too, too, too liquidy. And the same exact thing is gonna actually happen when you bag your filling and then you refrigerate it, okay? So we're cooking these shallots down. I don't know why they're taking so long, but it's, it's okay, we'll get there. 
So I got my squash here. This is probably gonna fill between two to three bags. I'm giving you guys um, the recipe to do one big bag of filling. Um, gosh, like I said, I'm not measuring. I am just eyeballing things. Yep, there he is in the flesh. Big daddy. Okay, so here's some nutmeg. I want you guys to throw a few sprinkles of nutmeg on top here. Ooh, that's just gonna add that nice fall winter warmth to your filling. Okay, so that is coming together. I need some pepe. You could add a tiny little bit of salt. I wouldn't do a ton just because you already have the salt in your cheese. Okay, but cooking with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, it flavors your food very nicely. Alrighty, here come those shallots. They are caramelizing. Cooking them down just a little bit. We are gonna take a break in my house. We do this all the time. Break, cheers. And that's just to stop and cheers whoever is around you. Just being grateful for this moment. We're so blessed, so, so blessed um, that we can do these kinds of things, spend time together, make pasta, that we have food. So grateful. Benedette, blessed. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna get a pastry bag ready to rock and roll here. These are huge, so I might only get two big pastry bags out of this, but I ordered these on Amazon. I just bought a huge big pack. Um, so let me get two big pastry bags ready to rock and roll. I'm so excited, so because once we get this in the bag, and we're gonna be ready to roll out our ravioli. I can't wait to show you guys the technique. It's really fun. Definitely takes some practice. Takes a little getting used to to get the hang of it, to get that feeling down. All right, I'm all done with my recipe book, so I'll put that away. Okay. Um, my sister-in-law, my brother, got me this pretty cool pasta roller. I was thinking about trying it out after this. I feel most comfortable just using the hand crank to show you guys, but if any of you guys have one of these, it attaches to the KitchenAid and it's like a, a motorized roller, if you will. Definitely excited to try this out. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, but just for the sake of what I feel the most comfortable with, it's this baby right here because it works the shoulders. That's right, we get our workout in here when we do that. Oh baby, there we go. The shallots are really caramelizing down. One thing that I also recommend when you're filling these bags up, you wanna fold down the top there so it doesn't get too, too messy, is, do I have something? Yes, I do. Okay, so I got like a coffee cup right here. This always helps when you're filling. You might want even something a little bit bigger than that. I don't know, let me see. I have, pretty nicely, like a big, huge mason jar. Stick that in there. And it makes the filling process so much easier. Okay. Here we go. So, I'm gonna pour these right into the bowl with the oil and everything. You could add an egg to this if you feel like it'll help it kind of come together a little bit more. I don't think that it needs it. Okay, this recipe right here. You might see some that call for eggs, some that don't. I just don't think that it needs it. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, that is gonna taste amazing in our ravioli, guys. So let's mix that all together. As for that cheese, oh Lord, like I said, this is probably a two bag, maybe even three bag filling here, pastry bag. There's definitely at least a good cup of cheese in there. A good cup. I want to hear something funny. So, my mom's grandmother, we're going to start filling. Um, Grammy Di Marco is her name. And uh, she always, like, when she cooked, she had a green cup. And, like, you would ask her, and I, I never cooked with her. My mom always did. She, um, she passed when I was really young. Um, they would say, Well, how much, Grandma? How much should we put in here? And she goes, Oh, I don't know, like two green cupfuls. That green cup, meant nothing like it didn't it wasn't like it was a half a cup or three quarters of a cup it was like 
her way of eyeballing a measurement, and she knew all of her recipes in her head and, and what that they should be measured. So it was all about that green cup, baby. This came with these little bags. These are cute little rubber band things. Okay, push everything all the way down. I'm gonna put one of these away and leave the other one out. Okay, because we are almost ready to roll out those wraps, so let's fill our second bag here. Just put it in the bag. All right, all that filling. See, that's not nice. It doesn't make too, too much of a mess when you do it that way. You guys having fun? I am. This is a blast. Thanks so much for cooking with me. Love you all. Mwah. Okay. Definitely scrape the bowl just for time purposes, okay? I'm gonna just chuck this baby in the sink so we can keep going. Again, if you're doing this after the fact, not quite live with me, you pause this anytime. If you're going a little bit slower, whatever, that's okay, All right? This takes time. And if you're doing a big batch, you definitely want, mm, you definitely want to take your time, have fun with it, and make as many of these puppies as you can, freeze them, you know? Oh, so that's something I did not mention just until just right now. I knew it was gonna taste good, but taste as you go. This filling, you should be tasting it and seeing if you like the flavor. Does it need more salt? Does it need more cheese? Does it need more nutmeg? I don't know. So taste as you go along. Assaggiare in italiano. That's how we say that. Okie dokie, Smokey. Look at that, looks like a cute little Easter bunny carrot. Surprise, I don't know. Okay, throw that in the fridge. This also freezes very well. So if you're doing filling, make a lot of it, freeze this, guys, okay? You could use this as pasta sauce on top of pasta. We're using it to fill the ravioli, but you can do so, so much with this. Okay, here we go. Are you guys ready? This is so exciting. Break. Yes, we're gonna do another one. Cheers, guys. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this stuff here, get it out of the way so I have space. You need a lot of space for this. Your kitchen's gonna get trashed. Embrace it, people, okay? It's okay, it's fun. This is fun. Okay, get all this stuff out of the way. We're done with the pastry bags there. Okay, get rid of the oleo. Paper towels. Saying everything in an Italian accent, okay? So we got some sheet pans here. I want you guys to put get some parchment paper. You don't need it, but it sure does make the cleanup a lot easier and it helps so that the ravioli don't stick to your pan. I'm gonna lay that out. Okay, I'm not gonna spend all day with you guys here, but I'm definitely gonna show you at least one to two rounds so that you feel comfortable with this technique right here. So, you're gonna cut off a little piece of that pasta there, whatever you feel comfortable with, okay? You know, if you're more beginner, you're gonna do a smaller piece, but if you're feeling a little gutsy, you've got that technique down, grab a big hunk and get rolling, you're gonna end up with like a big, huge sheet of pasta this big, okay? Put it back in the fridge in between rounds, okay? Okay, one thing that's pretty good to do here, you could always grab a rolling pin to flatten this out because we're gonna put it through the pasta roller here, okay? And if you don't have a pasta roller, yes, you can use a rolling pin technically, but it's not my favorite way to do it, guys. You can't quite get it sheet-like like that little piece of equipment does right there. Okay, but this does help to kind of get it nice and flat. This is a good starting place for rolling out that pasta. What we're gonna do before we go there, we got that mix of flour, semolina and all-purpose flour. We're gonna flour that pasta on the top. And we're gonna flour that pasta on the bottom. Okay, let's do this. Put it up here so um, I have the pasta roller on the thickest setting, that's the widest setting here. I'm gonna start rolling. Okay, so you roll it out once, we're gonna fold it in half. 
okay? We want to get this, remember that word, insieme, together, okay? The pasta is still isn't quite that perfect technique or texture that we want it to be just yet. If it gets sticky, add flour in between these little rounds here. Mine is feeling pretty good for the moment. Okay, you're gonna start seeing it come together nicely. I'm gonna add a little more flour. I'm gonna do one more time in half. It's getting sticky, so I'll flour it here. Flour it here. Put it in. Roll it out. Okay, make sure that that's really stuck to your countertop. Vice grip on there. Okay, this is a good activity. You know, it takes a little bit of coordination to kind of get, oh, actually, I'm not going to fold it in half. Oops. So after you're done with the first round, folding it in half maybe three times, four times, adding some flour in between, now we're ready to start thinning this pasta out. So go to the next setting and roll it through. Cool. Okay, now the next. Um, what I was saying is, you know, this is a lot of coordination. It's like rubbing your tummy and patting your head at the same time. So one person could hold the pasta and then the other person can roll. It's, it's fun to do this as a group. Okay, on to the next. Awesome job, guys. You're killing it. Okay. Getting there, getting there. Nice thin sheet of pasta is what we are looking for, guys. Not sure quite what got stuck in there. That's okay. Maybe that was a little hidden eggshell. Yep. So just pull that out. That's okay. We can kind of mend it a little bit there. Okay, beautiful. And there's the last one. Here we go. Oh, look at that, beautiful living, love it. It's really fun when this starts getting long. Okay. Mine, like I said, was more on the dry side, so I didn't have to add a ton of flour as I go along. Okay, if your pasta's feeling very, very sticky, you definitely wanna keep adding flour in between each round. So again, here's where you need bodies, okay? Get someone to roll, get someone to grab it from the other end. Okay, so now before I lay this out, because I'm gonna lay it out down here, you want the flour on the bottom of this. So get the flour spread out, okay? Before we start punching some ravioli. Okay, keep your bench scraper nearby. Cut just because of the length of my countertop here. It's nice if you have a nice long countertop if you're gonna do big ribbons of this. But I'm just gonna cut mine so y'all can see. Okay, if it's not moving underneath, okay, you wanna add more flour. Okay, get it to move nicely, okay, all the way across. Perfect, okay, here we go. We're ready to start filling. So I'm gonna get the scissors out, cut my pastry bag, and get out for you my little circle cutters. These are some circle cutters that I bought a few years ago and I like them a lot. They're cute if you're really trying to be fancy and plate things nicely, but they're also good for cookies, for ravioli. I also have some with the cute little scalloped edges and they make the ravioli look so pretty. Okay, oh, I almost forgot. The skizzers. So sometimes if you let this kind of sit in the fridge, that liquid's gonna come out, just kind of put it over the sink, get some of that residual liquid out, all right? Now this, how much filling you're gonna put on is gonna be dependent on how big you want your ravioli. So I'm gonna say like a tablespoon. You gotta eyeball this, guys, get comfortable with it. Okay, we're going right down the line. Hold the pastry bag from the top, guide it from the bottom. Go right across here. Beautiful color, that filling, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go to this top part here. A little chunk in there, and that's okay. You could 
take that chunk out or just throw it right in. Somebody's gonna get a chunky piece of butternut squash. So you know what, I think I will just chuck it out there. You want it to be nice and smooth. I used my KitchenAid mixer to get the, or KitchenAid, my Vitamix actually, another one of my favorite things, to get this butternut squash nice and smooth. You can use a food processor as well, okay? Pick this up here. Okay, are you guys ready for this? Are you ready for this? Okay, so to make half moon shaped ravioli, gee, I wish you guys could see a little bit better here. Sorry about that, let me fix my camera. Bring this up a little bit higher. Oh, can you guys see now? Good, okay. Let's bring that in a little bit closer. Okay, there we go, awesome. Okay, if you guys could only see my ghetto at home camera setup, okay? So here we go. We're gonna fold this top piece over very carefully, very delicate because we want that pasta to be nice and thin. We want the ravioli pasta to be thin and beautiful. Pasta bella. Okay, so we did that, and let's go down around and do this side too. So I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do right here with that piece, just let that piece go. A little loner there. Flip this one over. This end of the pasta ended up being a little bit thick or thinner in width. This one's thick. It's like as thick as my roller here. So maybe we'll use a smaller cookie cutter for this top piece. We'll use a larger cookie cutter for this piece here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stingy bene. That's something that uh, Pina in Italia taught me. Pina, I love you. How are you doing? She only speaks Italian and she would yell at me at my internship at Peck to stingy bene, squeeze it good. So you wanna get out all of the air there with your pasta. And let me also just say this, so if you're kinda of just watching and taking notes and you're gonna do this later on, what I would do is that your first round doing this, do not roll this out to the thinnest possible setting, okay? Roll this out um, to like the second to last um, setting, depending on how many settings your pasta roller has. Okay, because the thinner you go, the more room for air. Okay, so we're going all the way down the line, stingy bene, stingy bene. Okay, let's go do the top one here. This takes time, love and care. Okay, you don't want that filling to like ooze out of the filling there, so be really careful. Take your time. You can kind of pat down your filling even if it's puffed up a little bit too much. That we got probably a little more than a dozen ravioli here with one shot. Awesome. Okay, go down one more time down the line. Okay, okay. Get your cookie cutter ready. Like I said, the bottom half here, this is why I promised you, or I told you to make it nice and slippery on the bottom. Get that flour so that it moves nicely. Right now is why you're gonna see that, okay? So half moon shape, so I hope you guys can see that here. You're taking the cookie cutter, all right? And then you are going to push down and just slide up. And if it's dry enough there, you got enough flour on the bottom, it's gonna slide up really nicely without crinkling your ravioli. And then you can start picking up the pace a little bit. Push and slide, 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 slippity slide, okay? This is what happens when you start making pasta with an American. We start singing jock jams and random things. Hey, oh, see that one crinkled up a little bit. You can see I'm gonna just very carefully flare those edges back out. Okay, and look at, so that one I messed it up a tiny little bit. And the bottom, I didn't quite have it all the way under, but it'll be fine. We'll just kind of press it together there. None to waste, don't throw that away because it's not perfect, okay? When you make ravioli and they are rustico, as I call it, okay? Rust, rustico, rustic. They're gonna have little glitches in them. That's totally fine, guys, okay? That's what makes it so beautiful. 
So now I'm using the smaller cookie cutter because remember this pasta was a tiny bit thinner. But nice and dry, secco on the bottom. Okay. And this one was a little bit thicker, so I will use that and get more pasta to taste with that filling. Mm. And if you do sense it's gonna be sticky, don't push it away so much. Just be careful with it and then add a little bit of flour later. I'll shake that up a little bit better there. The pasta, you can always save this dough. If you're lazy like me sometimes, I hate to say this, but I do throw it away because this dough, it's a little bit more handled. It's a little drier, but you can always save it, okay? Roll it all out if you're trying to get as much bang for your buck here. Throw it in a big Ziploc baggie take all the scraps at the end, roll some more pasta out. There's attachments to these that have the linguine, the spaghetti, so throw this through there. This would work perfectly, but for the ravioli, I do like that smoother version of the pasta. You guys, holy crapioli. Look at this, oh my gosh. I'm gonna just kinda use my bench scraper to loosen everything up a little bit. Use the bench scraper, or you have a spatula lying around, which, what the hell is this? Oh, they're all dirty, that's okay. Use your bench scraper, get some flour, farina on here, and throw them on your cookie sheet, okay? Make some room in your freezer, so you can just kind of keep them like this, cook them right away. Check below for the recipe notes to do some butternut squash ravioli with a sage brown butter sauce. Oh, so delicious, you don't need much with this. You know, you could cook this with pancetta or you know, whatever, you know, vegetables, mushrooms you want, but all you really need is just some butter and some sage and some parmigiano reggiano e basta. It will be so, so, so delicious. Okay, so check the recipe notes below for that. So you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm gonna stop right here because I don't want this recipe video to get too, too long, but Rewind if you want to, you know, make and roll this out with me. You want me to hold your hand through this? That's totally fine. Um, oh, I forgot to roll this one out. This one, I'm just gonna kind of go like that. Stingy bending, use the little one. Hey, basta. Oh, so beautiful, guys. Well, thank you all very, very much for tuning in and take pictures, send them to me. Let me know how your butternut squash ravioli turns out. Sorry this video turned out a little bit long, but this is a full immersion class, okay? You know, maybe a fun edited video would be cool um, to show you guys like kind of an abridged version, if you will, on how to do this. But I wanted you truly to feel like you could come with me into my home and make ravioli that we could do this together. So make sure you guys, if you enjoy this, you subscribe and click the bell for notifications because then you're gonna get all the live updates of Figo, um, any live workouts that I'm gonna do, any immersion uh, you know, cooking classes that I'm gonna be doing. I do one of those uh, each month. And then the Figo show. Guys, first Friday of the month, every month is the Figo show, so stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you guys so much. Mwah. Happy Thanksgiving, and I love you all. Stay Figo. Stay fresh, kids.